Solo, a Star Wars story, was directed by Ron Howard, written by Lawrence and Jonathan Kasdan, and starred Alden Ehrenreich, Woody Harrelson, Amelia Clark, and Donald Glover. Hey there guys, Mr. Chicken here, welcome back to another video, and today we are going to be reviewing the only Star Wars film that I haven't properly reviewed. Now, I kind of talked about this one in an episode of the Cooped Up podcast, thanks to that up above, um, but really this is the only one I haven't made a full video discussing, and that's because honestly there's not much worth discussing when it comes to Solo. So I thought I would give it the context of now, when everyone's forgotten this film's existence, to talk about it. And yeah, the main thing that comes to mind with this movie is no one asked for it. I don't think anyone was really clamouring for a Han Solo film that didn't star Harrison Ford. And it really was a shadow that loomed over this film to the point where it did not do well financially because of it. And you can really see in the film that it's really struggling to justify itself. It does what pretty much all of the Disney Star Wars projects have done, which is heavily nostalgia bait and hope that that will get us there, but the movie really is kind of pointless. And that's a shame, because it has a good story it genuinely wants to tell. The problem is it's so bogged down with some other things going on. No one wanted to see a film where Han Solo explains where he got his name or the dice in the Millennium Falcon, but we would happily see just a standalone film featuring him. And this is where several of the main problems come from. Because we have these conflicting interests on what kind of a solo film we want to get, the film's pacing is absolutely horrible. The film just never really starts its own story. And because of that, it never really follows a traditional structure, nor does it ever slow down to particularly develop its characters or plot. It's just always moving to the point where it leaves the audience behind at some parts. And whilst a lot of these characters are really enjoyable, all of the characters go through pretty much no arcs or development, and quite frequently they contradict parts of their own characters. Uh, in terms of the actual characters themselves, we have Han Solo, who admittedly was better than I thought, but he was kind of just dull in this film. We had Woody Harrelson, who's kind of just playing himself in this. Emilia Clark is a blank slate, the villain is incredibly one-note, but the one saving grace of this is Lando, played by Donald Glover. He is having a fun time in this movie, and I actually like the idea of him being this pansexual smuggler. I don't dislike it. The bit I do dislike is the weird Lando X droid thing going on here. I think that's really strangely done. Uh, and ultimately, I really didn't care for that character at all. The only arc that any character really goes through is Han Solo himself, and the arc is him learning not to trust people? Alright then, okay. And fair play, I did like the twists at the end in terms of who betrays who and the way that that goes, but there wasn't the necessary build up there. This film feels like it's been filled with so many things that a lot of these elements just don't work on their own. I also thought I'd talk about the filmmaking a little bit here because Ron Howard is an alright director, but I'm gonna be honest, this is not his best work. For starters, the film at some points feels needlessly dark, not in terms of tone, I mean literally dark. The Millennium Falcon is pitch black most of the time. A lot of the stuff on Corellia, I get that it's like night, I get that that's the gimmick of the planet, but it's so dark at times you're struggling to see what's going on. It's just weird. It doesn't match the tone at all, really. And don't get me wrong, there are some really cool shots and effects present here. As always with these Star Wars movies, the CGI is excellent. And I've got to say, it is pretty good from a camera work perspective, but the cinematography is quite dull. I've got to say. I enjoyed a lot of the action scenes, but without any stakes in them, it just feels like you're going through the motions. You know, they're well choreographed, they're well directed and everything, but there's no meat behind what we're seeing here, and that really disappointed me with Solo. I'm sure many people are going to enjoy this film, but in terms of it making a long-standing impression on you, this film really has been forgotten. And in fact, after watching this review, you probably will forget that Solo is a Star Wars film within the next few days. 
And yeah, the film never could justify its existence. Is it because of studio meddling? Is it because of some poor thought out ideas? Maybe, I think you can make cases for all of them there. I think the first act was a particular slog, in my opinion, where towards the end it was gaining momentum and was quite good, where I just went, oh, okay, so the pace that they set out here, we're actually meant to be following, okay. And when I finally started following it, I'd say it's around the halfway point, I actually liked what I was seeing from there. I kind of just accepted what the film was doing at that point and went along with the flow. It's not ideal, I wasn't really invested in what was going on, but you know, the plot was speeding up a little bit, it wasn't trying to force unnecessary references down our throat anymore. You know, it, w it was more enjoyable. But then the first half of the film is kind of tricky to get through. It almost feels like a fan film at some points. A couple of other random things that were kind of just floating around in this film. Uh, the production design is, you know, all right in this film. Um, I think the editing, again, was pretty average, and the music is also very average, which is why, like this film, I can't remember any of it, but I feel like in the music case it's unfair, because you're just comparing, like, this movie to John Williams. Uh, so I think I'll give the movie a pass for having forgettable music, given the fact it's not John Williams composing it. I also heavily disliked a lot of these stupid things they put in there where it's like, this is a Han Solo movie, we have to justify to people that we've made a good Han Solo movie. So what they do is they take a load of Han Solo things in the original trilogy and just pluck them into the film for no apparent reason. They go, oh Han shot first, look. Oh Han did the castle run, look. It's just so repetitive and honestly really cheap to constantly bring up, you know, better films uh, to try and trick us into liking this one. And yeah, honestly, this film is a bit of a chore. What I will say is there were some things that this film was trying where I was thinking, that's what this film should have been. I liked how energetic the pace of this film was trying to be, but it was completely let down by, to be honest, a rather lacklustre script, which really disappointed me from Lawrence Kasdan. I like they're trying to make a sort of espionage heist film, which is high speed and filled with double crossing, but in reality the way they present it is about as boring as it can be. I like how charming a lot of the performances are here, but they're given absolutely nothing to do. Like, who's saying to themselves, oh yeah, I can't wait to see Queera again? Yeah, quickly talking about that, Han and her relationship was pretty bad. Thankfully, however, this film did get one relationship right, which I was really impressed with, which was Han Solo and Chewbacca. Those two are a genuinely good comedic duo in this film. As a whole, I think a lot of the jokes actually work quite well, but it's always contradicting itself. I didn't think that the concept of a Solo film could possibly work, but to see them almost hit the mark and screw it up with such basic fundamental flaws just really disappointed me. It really did feel like this film was doing the bare minimum, and to be honest, from a storyboarding perspective, I feel like Disney was doing the bare minimum. There are so many good ideas here, and it's just squandered by this film having a forced lack of personality. So, what's my overall conclusion on Solo? Well, for a film that I don't think anyone was really keen on, I guess it could have been worse, but also, it's not good. And it's not memorable either. Like, I'm pretty sure Solo is just, like, comfort food for Star Wars fans, where you'll have it and then you'll enjoy it and then you'll immediately forget it, and that'll be that. You know, I, I, that, that's what I'm taking away from Solo, and maybe it isn't like that to other people, I don't know. But from my point of view, it was just a bit of a waste of potential. And because of that, it existed, like I said, it did the bare minimum, and it really failed to make an impression. I'm giving Solo a Star Wars story a 5 out of 10. But hey, that's just my own opinion. So let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts on Solo are and where it ranks in the rest 
of the Star Wars movies. Like I said, I did a full Star Wars films ranking on an episode of the Cooped Up podcast. Link to that up above. Also, be sure to check out my Twitter, at Mr. Chicken Movies, but I'm afraid that is it for the video. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.